Hey everybody, Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com. Today we're going to unbox and check out the P40 from Western Digital Black. Now you can't use this drive as your primary drive on your brand new PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X or S, but that doesn't mean you don't need it. So let's unbox this thing and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Before we get into how the P40 might be used in your system, I want to talk a little bit about speed. Now, originally hard drives were limited by their bus and also by the physical manifestation of that speed, which is your rotation speed. So the mechanical drives would have a spinning platter in there that would spin at 5200 RPM, 7200 RPM, or in the super high end you might see 10,000 or even 15,000 RPM, especially in servers. Now we've moved away from that mechanical storage because that bus speed was very limiting. Most mechanical hard drives at the high end would push between 100 and 133 megs per second, which sounds like a lot until you realize that we're moving now gigs per second. So we've moved away from that mechanical hard drive. Now you're gonna start seeing SSDs. Now SSDs are about 550 megs per second, and there's no moving parts anymore. That's all flash storage, but it's still not the fastest bus. 550 is obviously a dramatic improvement over 133, but we're just pushing a lot more pixels these days. So with your PlayStation 5 and your Xbox Series X and S, especially the PlayStation 5, we've seen move to an NVMe drive. So you might see something like this very soon that we'll be talking about. So this is an NVMe drive and you'll see down here at the bottom, it is 7,300 megs per second, 7.3 gigs per second read speed. We'll get back to that. Western Digital, though, has been moving into this space for a while now. In addition to the P40, we also have drives like the D30, which is also an NVMe. A little bit bigger, kind of a chunkier drive. And this predecessor, despite having a larger name, the P50. Now the P50, as you can see, is slightly bigger than the P40. The funny thing is, Bigger's not always better. This is the slowest of them, followed by this one, and now this brand new one is the fastest of all three. So we're going to be benchmarking those, but I'm going to set these over on the side just for historical reference, if you will. Now this new P40 drive, you can see, especially by comparison, is significantly smaller and lighter than the previous model. That's great because you can easily put this next to your system and it's unobtrusive, but how would you use this? Well, let's talk about how you might move things between your PlayStation 4, your PlayStation 5, or even within your PlayStation 5, just as an example. Whether you bought the disc-based version or the digital version of the PlayStation 5, you only have a terabyte of space. And actually, after the operating system is installed, you really only have 668 gigs. Now, we have shown you on this channel how you can safely crack open your PlayStation 5 and install a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drive, but those can be very expensive. So what do you do in the meantime? Well, that's where the Western Digital Black P40 comes in. This drive, you can take that, using Call of Duty again as an example, 250 gigs, and you can move it off of your internal storage and onto this external drive. That way, when you're ready to play again, you can simply grab that and move it back to internal storage, and you're off to the races again. Also, you can use this for storage for any other media. So if you have downloaded movies or you want to be able to take something on the go with you, you can grab this, load things on it, go to your friend's house, plug it in and fire it up. In terms of connectivity, Western Digital has gone with a USB-C, but they took it one step further. This USB-C cable, which is actually a pretty decent length, comes with an adapter. So on the PlayStation 5, obviously, you can plug this directly into the front, but you may want to use one of the high speed ports on the back. And for that, you're going to need this adapter, which they have included, which is very nice of them. So you can plug this into the high speed port on the back of the PlayStation, plug this into the drive itself. I love USB-C because it does not matter which direction you plug it in. There's no getting this wrong. And then plug it in. It will ask to be formatted and you're able to start loading material on it. I want to mention an element of craftsmanship that's changed over time with the Western Digital Black series. Now looking back at this D30, we have this hard, solid plastic case, and I've actually dropped this once or twice, and it's still held together perfectly, but it is plastic. With the older P50, we have obviously a larger case, but it's made of aluminum. 
And now with this more compact P40, it's also aluminum. So in addition to being harder to break should you drop it, it's also got heat dissipation. This is actually cold to the touch. When you start copying large volumes of data, this is gonna get hot. So that aircraft grade aluminum will dissipate that heat a little better than anything that plastic would do. So let's crack this thing open and see what's underneath. Now I don't have any sort of sponsorship with iFixit or anything like that, so we'll have to go for what I got. I have no idea if this voids the warranty, but I think it's important to see what's going on underneath. So let's de demystify some tech. Undoubtedly, this is just gonna be an NVMe with a some sort of thermal pad and some sort of sensor. With those screws removed, we can finally get inside. So we have that thermal pad that I mentioned here and looks like a bit of maybe a bit of padding to keep that screw off of that. We have this daughter board here. Undoubtedly that provides the interface for this USB-C and also probably some thermal sensing. And then we have a standard NVMe drive. So this drive probably goes into an interface right about here, plugs in, locks down, just like an NVMe drive that you would put inside your PC. So demystified, that's what's going on inside this aluminum chassis. Pretty simple stuff. And there's a aluminum pad, or there's a, a thermal pad underneath here that links to another uh, aluminum chassis part, both of these to dissipate heat. So let's put this back together and I'll give you my final thoughts after we do some benchmarking. I'm using both Atto and the Western Digital dashboard here to showcase the read and write theoretical speeds. It also illustrates the challenge with synthetic tests as they're both very bursty and not necessarily representative of what you'll see with sustained reads and writes. I do like how much the Western Digital dashboard has evolved. It was pretty clunky for a while there, but it's downright useful now. With the P40, we've got firmware updates, tools, RGB adjustments, temperature monitoring, and more. It's one of the few pieces of pack-in software I find myself actually using. Looking closer, we can see what Atto was able to come up with. I run each benchmark three times just to make sure that they're consistent. In this case, they very much are. 1.65 gigs per second for write and 1.85 gigs per second for read speeds. The box advertises up to two gigs per second and this drive is hitting pretty close to that mark. I would like to see the write speeds bump up for future iterations though. Looking for a repeatable test, I turned to 3D Mark. Their benchmark test loads up a number of game simulations like loading Overwatch while using OBS, or booting up Black Ops 4 or Battlefield 5. This is a very abbreviated look at that in the background as each test takes about 15 minutes. The score coming from the drive test is 1056, which in a vacuum means nothing, so I tested some other drives. First, I stepped back a generation and looked at the D30 from Western Digital Black, and surprisingly it performed very well at about 75% of the speed of the P40. Here we have the P50, which is essentially the physically larger version of the P40. Still, the P40 manages to outperform it slightly. I also fired up the Seagate Firecuda game drive. It only managed to deliver roughly half of the speed of the P40, which shows that not all game drives are going to deliver the same experience. Looking at the P40 one more time, it's clear that it's outperforming every other drive I could find. It also showcased some impressive numbers in the real world simulation. I did, however, manage to pull far faster numbers from moving files between high speed drives. Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that one of my favorite topics is warranties. Now, I like it when companies stand behind their products, not a 90-day warranty or a one-year warranty. So I'm happy to report that all of the Western Digital Black devices, including the P40, carry a full five-year warranty. So for five years, you have total peace of mind that what you put on this drive is gonna stay there. Those are some pretty impressive benchmarks, but I think the thing that surprised me the most was the generational leap between the D30 and the P50 and how much of a difference that 2x2 interface made between the Seagate and the P40. Now, between the P40 and the P50, obviously we're looking at the same drive, but in a different form factor. But even so, the newer model did outperform the P50. So, it's very easy to make that recommendation. If you can get your hands on a P40 over a P50, do so. Would I recommend upgrading from a P50 to a P40? Probably not. Now that said, I do have a deep appreciation for moving large video files, especially like the one I'm recording right now. 
being able to move things between systems quickly, the time that I save is invaluable. So that makes it a very easy recommendation for me. Let me know in the comments what kind of use cases you might have for high-speed storage. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com, saying thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again very soon.